This is why you should always keep your phone charged. A girl named Marissa came home from school at around 3 p.m. She walked in the door and told her mom that some random number kept calling her all day. Her mom told her the person may have the wrong number and just to ignore it. Marissa said okay and begins to do her homework. A couple hours later, she receives a phone call from the same number. Marissa answers at this time and says, Hello? The man then says, we finally found you. Don't worry, bunny. Marissa begins to panic and tells her mom what just happened. Her mom's face goes blank and says, what did the man just call you? Marissa says, he called me bunny. Her mom yells and says, grab your stuff. We need to leave. Marissa confused, packs her things and gets into the red car. Her mom begins driving fast and turns on the radio. The radio says, the baby named Marissa who was kidnapped in the hospital 10 years ago has been found and police are searching for a red car. Marissa looks at the woman and says, who are you? The woman looks back and says, you can call me mommy. People you never knew existed. This is Josephine Myrtle and she was born with four legs and two sets of genitals. Despite having these conditions, she got married and had five kids. These are the only two men in the world who can speak the Ayapaneco language in Mexico. But they don't talk to each other because they have beef. Doctors were left stunned when this man came into the hospital complaining about chest pain. After a couple of scans, they realized he had two hearts. Jill Price has perfect memory of her life and if you ask her what she ate for breakfast 20 years ago, she would get it right. Most Evilish Children, Part 1 Mary Bell Mary Bell was born from a 17-year-old sex worker in England. Throughout this little girl's childhood, she was always abused. From her own mother and from her mother's clients. That's when she decided to take her anger out on other people. The day before her 11th birthday, she took this little boy into an abandoned house and strangled him. His name was Martin Brown. Her and her friend Norma Brown even went to a nursery home and trashed it, but the cops let it go because they thought it was a sick prank. Then they took this little boy named Brian Howe by the nursery and also strangled him. Mary did unspeakable things to his body. She was then convicted of manslaughter and deemed a psychopath. She was locked up for 12 years, but then got released in 1980 at the age of 23. She was then given a brand new identity to avoid the spotlight. So now she's free to do whatever she wants. She could even be your neighbor and you would never even know. Like this video for a part two of Evilish Children. The creepiest urban legends from around the world, part five. Scotland, the White Death. Legend holds that there was once a little girl who hated being alive so much she wanted to destroy every trace of herself. She burned all her belongings and then killed herself. But then her family found out, and within a few days, they were all found dead with their limbs torn apart. It's said that her vengeful spirit returned as the White Death to hunt down anybody who knows about her existence. And before she kills you, she'll knock at your door seven times. creepy last words people said right before dying. Anna said that her grandfather died from lung cancer. He was fine, but then once he was diagnosed, he deteriorated very quickly. Within a month from his diagnosis, he had passed away. She said that her father took care of him in his room around the clock until the day that he died. During this time period, he would get very focused on the corners of the room. He would stare at them, and then later he would say things like, Get them away. I see them in the corners. And I see the dark in the corners. Anna said that her and her family would ask what, where. But the only thing he would say was the corner. Anna said that her mother witnessed this and got very frightened. Anna's mother said that what he was seeing was not a good sign and that it could mean that he has many sins. Her mother grew up in a small village where there were many sayings like that. She said that some people usually see their dead relatives when they're dying, but others see some not so good good things. Anna thinks that her mother was implying that he was seeing demons. This is the scary truth behind celebrities. If you ever seen a celebrity do this hand symbol and then place it over their eyes in photos, it's actually not a fun symbol. It actually symbolizes the number 666. And these aren't the only symbols that celebrities express to the public. And it's leading many people to believe that they are doing symbols like this to symbolize their alliance to the Illuminati. This is extremely crazy, but let's be honest, these symbols that they are doing don't look normal at all. And it really makes you think why they are doing them. The rarest things in the world, part 11. The pinstripes on every Rolls Royce since 2003 have been painted by one man named Mark Court. It's the last manufacturing step and can't afford even the slightest mistake since the paint instantly bonds with the car's body and can't be erased. 
A Russian girl named Amina is admired for her unusual beauty. She's diagnosed with two rare genetic conditions, albinism, which makes her skin and hair extremely white, and heterochromia, in which her eyes are different colors. Costing around $300 per pound, A5 olive wagyu beef is the rarest steak in the world. Due to the cow's specialized diet of caramelized olive pulp, the steak gives off hints of olive oil and is very buttery in texture. In 1989, Wisconsin, seven generations of a family were alive at the same time. The ages of the mother slash daughters were 109, 89, 70, 52, 33, 15, and one month. This unbelievable occurrence remains undisputed and stands as a world record to this day. Look, I get it. I got a platform. I got to watch what I say, even as a joke, whatever. The thing is, I've had an actual hot take that I've been holding on to for way too long. But like, an actual hot take. I'm going to need y'all to hear me out. Give me a chance. Now, exotic pets are wrong. That's a fat thumbs down. I feel like cheetahs are begging to be tamed. Now, listen, I'm not talking house pets. You wouldn't feed them right. There isn't a backyard big enough. They'd be miserable. Fat no-no. But the way we weaponize falcons, we could get a lot of mileage out of a feline Ferrari. Cheetahs are probably the most people say predators on the planet. I don't know if a cheetah's ever life retired a person, but I know they must have deserved it. And I know you've seen that video of that forest guard culling a family of cheetahs every night. Also, think about this. Cheetahs aren't even big cats. Big cats are like lions, tigers, leopards, jaguars. Cheetahs are basically overgrown house cats that got thrown into the savannah. It's like taking the best fifth grade basketball player in the world and putting him in the NBA. It's a wild mismatch. They get bullied so bad they literally need emotional support dogs in captivity just to have the confidence to be themselves. So yeah, I think if we had the tools, a cheetah-human duo would go crazy and effort. Another hot take. If cheetahs ever get to that point, I think they're fine right now, but if they ever get close to extinction like they were back in the day, we really could just airdrop them to Australia. And I know most things in Australia eventually become a problem, and every time we try to play God, we get burned, but it'd really be them and dingoes, and cheetahs would probably nerf the rabbit problem and keep kangaroos humble. But yeah, if there's a wild animal humanity wants to collab with next, please let it be cheetahs. Crazy facts you won't believe. Humans share 50% of their DNA with bananas. There's a planet made of diamonds in our galaxy. There's more stars in the universe than grains of sand on every place in Earth. Bananas are berries, but strawberries aren't. Imagine having facts like this delivered to you every day. I found this app called Nibble, and it's a great way to dive into quick, fun lessons on any topic you can imagine. From art to science to finance, Nibble's got it all covered in bite-sized lessons. With Nibble's 10-minute interactive lessons, you'll learn much faster. It's like my personal knowledge hack I use to learn things quickly. So if you want to learn things fast, try out Nibble today and learn in a different way. A few months ago, we talked about this terror that's at Disneyland where you go in a boat and through Monstro's mouth and you can see the top of its mouth with all of its veins in its mouth and it's terrifying. But have you ever seen the animatronic one that's at Disneyland Paris? Because there's a ride called Pinocchio's Daring Journey in... Disneyland Paris, and uh, this gigantic animatronic whale, Monstro, pops out at you, I would crap myself. This picture is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my entire life, where the lights are on and you can see what it looks like before it pops out. Am I the only one extremely creeped out by this picture in particular? Here's another picture of the lights kind of on, where it's in this enclave. Ugh. Why is it giving Little Shop of Horrors? But this is where it looks like in the complete darkness. Whew. So yeah, watch this. Would you ever go on this ride? Have you ever gone on this ride? Are you scared of whales as well? Um, watch this. Let me know how you're feeling. A 24-year-old mukbanger just died after her stomach ripped open on live stream. This was also a 10 hour live stream. It was very lengthy and she was consuming a lot of things, cake, chicken, everything, you name it. She was a Chinese woman by the name of Pan Shaoting. She died last week from a stomach rupture on the live stream after consuming over 15 pounds of food. The autopsy report suggested that her stomach literally ripped open because there was a lot of undigested food in there and the stomach was distended. This is not the first incident either. She was hospitalized a few months ago for her stomach bleeding for the same thing, eating a lot of food on a live stream. And it's sad too, because even her parents are begging her to stop. But a lot of mukbang culture has become a little toxic. 
the more outrageous it gets, the more viewers, you know, these people get and the more money they make. It kind of incentivizes them to destroy their bodies in this way. I really feel for this young girl and her family. It's just so sad. Hopefully other mukbangers see this and they take this as like a warning. Just be more careful. Your stomach can literally rupture. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, these videos are for informational purposes only. Hello? Hello? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Ah! Oh my god! What the f is that? Ah! <laughs>imagine going to the gym and never leaving y'all this is absolutely heartbreaking so a man named brian sink i believe that's his name that from what i've looked into what lost his life inside of one of the tanning beds in a planet fitness and stayed there for two almost two days y'all they weren't able to even locate this man or even know this man was missing now according to what i looked into he went to the gym around the time i guess they were closed and had i you know used the tanning room and at the time that they had closed up for whatever reason they had not realized he was still in there and occupying that area and no one might have checked i don't know all i know that there was reports in indiana at a planet fitness it's the exact location right here that a man was found uh, deceased inside of a tanning bed like one of those long you know rectangular like tanning beds and they are still trying to figure out how he managed to get stuck in there y'all be careful with everything going on in this world someone just got stuck in a tesla please be safe and careful when you go places so the case of the female hannibal lecter is hands down the most shocking i've ever encountered and i have I've seen a lot. The worst is what happened to her final romantic partner. Now, she had an intention to seek revenge on this man because he had left her, and again, she has this pervasive feeling that she needs to control everything around her, including him, so what she did was a true horror story. And if you do want additional details on this, we have an entire episode on the case. Basically, he didn't show up for work, and a lot of people at his work, they knew that Catherine was a violent problem in his life, so police were sent to his home and this is what they found. Catherine had knifed through his body upwards of 37 times. She then skinned him and hung the skin up in the foyer. And then she hoisted up the body, removed the head, propped him up in an armchair, like positioned him and posed him. And then police were wondering, you know, where's, where's the head? Where did she take the head? They go into the kitchen. She was boiling it. He had spent hours cooking all these ingredients from his body with the intention that when his daughters came home, they would walk in, see their dad's skin hanging up in the entrance of the home, see his body hoisted up in the chair, and then she would force them to eat their dad. I am telling you, doing night security, it's gotta be one of the scariest jobs. Okay, so this photo right here, this was captured by Michael Hostin on the third floor bathroom of a Dallas shopping mall. The reason he took it was because he's night security and he heard noises coming from his bathroom, but he was nervous to check the actual stall, so he sends a picture to his coworker. After he sent the picture, he eventually leaves the bathroom, but then gets a text where his coworker says, keep your weapon drawn and call for backup. He had no idea what he was talking about until he increased the brightness of this picture. It's not easy to see in the dark, but with the photo enhanced and slightly brightened, you can see somebody peeking over the top of that middle stall. Someone was in there, looking directly at him as he searched the bathroom. But even with a visual, by the time backup eventually came, whoever this was, they were gone, and we were left with this picture. And if you're loving creep time, make sure to go follow on Insta. abandoned house and there's just flies we wanted to go inside but now we're like scared to go inside they're in every single window and they're like alive but you see that up there you see all the flies Dude, what the heck? What is 
this? They're like blankets and clothes. Mineral spirits? Very, very scary. Breaking news, a man who had been missing since Friday was found deceased inside of a Planet Fitness tanning bed. They confirmed that the 39-year-old went into the tanning bed on Friday morning and was not found until three days later on Monday morning. Thority said his aunt reported him missing on Friday and she said he was wearing an ankle monitor that helped investigators determine that he never left the gym. A woman who was at Planet Fitness that morning before law enforcement showed up said that she and other members noticed a foul smell in the building that got worse near the tanning rooms. She said the tanning bed has a door, I believe, but still, why are we not concerned that the tanning bed has been closed for three days potentially? Since the incident, they put a sign on the door saying tanning is currently unavailable, but the rest of the gym is in full use. When they reached out to Planet Fitness for a comment, they said they could only confirm they were investigating a death at the location and they didn't elaborate on the circumstances. He said it's a local franchise and they're going to look into what happened with the franchise owner. Man's family called him a loving person and they said they hope to see stricter policies on cleaning and end of day checklists for staff to prevent this from happening again. Let me know what you guys think about this, but rest in peace to this poor man and as always, I'll keep you guys updated. Let's talk about one of the most craziest documented mermaid cases in history. When I tell y'all this whole thing is wild because it's actually documented. Now this took place in the Kai Islands during 1943 during World War II. And basically these Japanese soldiers were stationed with a surveillance team in this small remote island in Indonesia, which is known as the Kai Islands. And they reported seeing some strange stuff, y'all. And every time they seen these creatures, it was near the water. And these are Japanese soldiers we're talking about, y'all. And they were saying that they were seeing these myrrh-like beings around 150 centimeters tall and having like a pinkish skin as well as like prominent spines on their heads. But they said, unlike the classical mermaids, they didn't have fish tails. And it was also stated that they had like rows of like these sharp catty like teeth. And the soldiers said that the faces was not cute at all. Not like the mermaids were used to. They had like human like ape like features and spines along the neck and a lipless mouth with tiny little sharp teeth and shoulder length hair. Basically, like, the Japanese soldiers was, like, asking the locals and the indigenous people of the Kai Islands, like, what is this? Like, what is going on? Is this normal? And they were very familiar with these creatures. And excuse me if I pronounced it wrong, but they called them Irangi Khan or something like that, which basically means man fish or mermaid. So these Japanese soldiers think they were tripping, but this whole time, the, the people already knew about it and they live amongst them. Like, they're just used to it at this point. And they've been spotting them all over the beaches and the lagoons for years. And it was one night, one of the soldiers was on the beach at night and he thought it was a child, but he was like, that's weird for a child to be, you know, out here by himself on the beach. Until the creature turned around and he could see in the moonlight the facial features. And when the creature basically noticed that the soldier was watching the whole time, he turned around and looked at him and just dived right in the water and did not resurface ever. So these soldiers were just so scared and like basically being harassed by these creatures to the point where they told their, their sergeant, so the sergeant went and spoke with basically like the chief or the leader of the um, Kai Islands at the time. And he told him that, you know, this this is normal. But if we catch one, you know, over the years, we'll, you know, one will wash up or we'll, you know, make a mistake and catch one in his nets. But it was like, if we catch one, we will, you know, let you know and you can come see it. And they did. So they basically called the sergeant and he went to see this creature and he was in shambles. I'm talking about flabbergasted. Like he was in complete shock like at what he was seeing like this is a whole mermaid creature in front of me and these people are used to this like they just casually caught this on a good old random friday so whenever the sergeant went back to you know where their designated area back in japan or wherever they were he was basically telling the people with the government and just like the people in the military everything that was going on scientists he was like saying basically y'all need to go research what's going on over there this is not normal but people really laughed at him and pushed it to the side because it didn't help that he didn't have any actual evidence or any pictures of it. So they really like was not stunned him and it actually kind of like made his reputation because, you know, he's a respected sergeant in the military. The Japanese military at that and you up here coming up me telling me about these mermaid stories. But this whole case was wild. This is actually a real documented case. You can search it up and everything like these people were real life seeing mermaids. And the people that lived there, the indigenous people that lived there was just used to it. They don't bother us. We don't bother them. Simple.
But let me know what y'all think about this crazy mermaid story because this is actually very true and very wild. And don't forget to stay tuned for more of my mermaid tales from across the globe.